I want to go to Dr. Steve Pachinik now. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Alex. And, 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 and Doc, I didn't mean to go into that whole rant earlier about you or me or any of this. I just don't think people understand. This isn't a TV show that's like entertainment. This isn't fiction. Uh, the general public needs to know exactly what's going on here. And the fact that you and I and others are having such a big effect against this criminal, piratical group uh, of criminals shows that they're not invincible. In fact, they're quite weak. And the fact that Hillary's coming out naming us, the fact that they're all panicking, the fact they're claiming I'm a Russian agent has really, really uh, a window, I think, into the fact that these are a bunch of unconfident crooks who can be brought down and our republic can be restored if the people just take it to the next level. What do you say to that, sir? Well, I want to thank you and all the people who work with you and, of course, the audience that's been with us for, what, over 14 years. And I think they, you and they deserve most of the credit. My, my input is basically to say, look, this is my experience. This is where I want to reality test some issues. And as you know, sometimes I make a prophecy and often it becomes true. But it's not a question that I'm just throwing it out in the air. It's based on a lot of the issues that I know, the past experiences. But it really resonates with the American public. Now, we are at a point where we do have what I think the most effective revolution we've had in over 40 to 50 years without fighting, without guns, without weapons. And I see this all over the United States. I just traveled over 4,000 miles. And you can hear the rumbling. You can hear the, the fact that people are questioning Hillary. They're now talking about her illness or Parkinsonism. And then you find out, as a result of all of the things that we've done, including you and the audience, then Michael Savage, uh, Dr. Michael Savage, whose Ph.D. is in ethnocentric medicines or ethnic medicines, which is a Ph.D. program, was thrown off the air on WABC for simply reading the, the diagnosis that I made, Dr. Drew made, and a bunch of others, a doctor. Yeah, he has one of these rare, I mean, I mean, almost medical degrees in its classification, correct me if I'm wrong, because it's the original apothecary, and that's right. a pretty high-level yeah. degree. He's a really smart guy, 400 stations. But he, listen, he's, he's suddenly radio silent. He told me last week in front of the crew here on Skype in a break, he said, Alex, I don't know how long I'll be on the air. CBS is really censoring me. I want to air this interview on my show today, but 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 they're not letting me. And he was really upset. So the point is, this really shows how desperate they are, and that's what I'm getting at. We have the that's Pope correct. coming out, and, and, I, and I hate to interrupt you, but i got to toot your horn. You were on two weeks ago, and you said that Tim Kaine, who had attacked me that very day, saying I'm this horrible, evil, deplorable, you know, racist person with no evidence, her, her VP was basically a Jesuit operative, and that their failed system was feeding Hillary's agenda. The Pope came out in a Catholic newspaper, it's on Infowars.com, and word for word quoted Hillary and Kane about de the deplorable conspiracy theorist media are terrorists, these are quotes, and should be shut down. For me, that's incredible proof. Is he getting talking points from them, or are they getting them from him? Because well, this is word for word. Ways. Let, let me... Uh let me reiterate what I've said to you and what I've written for over 10, 15 years. I knew the Pope when he was the Jesuit director under the Argentinian Colonel uh, a coup, a military coup, which killed thousands and thousands of people by eliminating them completely. I was asked by the Argentinian military in the late 1970s during the Carter administration to come over to Argentina and assist the colonels in basically dealing with what they called communists. Now, what they meant by communists were innocent citizens as well as innocent Christians, primarily Catholic priests, Catholic nuns who were herded together underneath the, the military colonel uh, 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 supremacy of Argentina with the blessing of the Pope. The Pope was then the director of the Jesuit uh, council in Argentina. And in fact, he, didn't he, the word is they even used confession to, to have a list that was handed over. Well, he not only helped and worked with the colonels and allowed many of the colonels to kill and abscound with Jesuit priests, two of them who were arrested and eventually tortured, and, a, and sanctioned the torture and the death of four other nuns. So this pope is exactly like Pope 
uh, uh, yeah, uh, the one who was a former Nazi, and and so on and so Rat forth. Singer. My interest is not so much in the Pope, but what you said, Alex, and I didn't realize that he was stupid enough to literally take the words and to try to rationalize the fact that Cain, of course, was a Jesuit. The reason is I treated these guys. I used to treat them. Sure, well, you said it looks like Hillary is being run by Jesuits to a certain extent. Well, and, But, I mean, I now we have them word for word, sir. What I'm saying is they are word for word copying each other. So they're in lockstep at this point. Correct. But what's happening, Alex, is let, let me get it. Clear. Sure, go ahead. Sorry. It's exactly what you said. It's not a question of malevolence only. It's a question of incredible stupidity and a lack of understanding of how self-incriminating both Tim Kaine was because he was, in fact, working with Negro Ponte, a very good ambassador, but at the same time a strong operative with our CIA. We had a very strong presence in Honduras. I flew there and then went on to Noriega. The generals in Argentina who asked me to come forth, I have to thank Secretary of State Vance under Jimmy Carter, who said to the generals that if Dr. Pachenik doesn't want to work with you, he will not work with you. And not only that, I went up to the Secretary of State and asked him, could I work against them? And I did. And eventually we were able to get rid of the colonels and eventually get rid of the, the, the Jesuit director who then went on to become the Pope Francis. Amazing. So what does this signify? It I mean, you brought it up, so it must be important. happening, Alex? And let me tell the audience, it's not about me or people like me. It's that there is, there are people in this country, in this wonderful country, and all over the world, Catholics, Jews, Muslims, who stand up to the overriding suppression and, 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 and terror of any system. In Argentina, people were disappearing night and day. The Jesuit director, this, the, 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 at that time he was cardinal, was so frightened and so compromised that he had nothing to say and in fact was collusive. In the real world of civil law and even Catholic law, this pope should be indicted for collusion and murder. That's what I said. I've said it for 30 years and I will not step away from that. In fact, what happened is I created the Brer Rabbit in that Jesuit pope and in fact, Tim Kaine stuck to it and Hillary because they don't really understand the history of how the Jesuits worked for us both on the CIA side and as well on the, on the theological side. At the same time, Hillary has been so porous in her uh, reality check and so vulnerable that in fact, the reason I called up and I wanted to talk to the audience was that I was somewhat disappointed with Trump because- well, That's my next question. Uh, what what do you make of that performance? I know he was advised. I was not happy. And the reason I'm not happy is the same reason I called up many months ago to say Manafort has to go. And in fact, I will categorically state it again, and Trump will not like this, neither will his group. He cannot have the group that he has now. General Michael Flynn is a great DIA. He's a defense intelligence agent, but he is not a psychological warfare. Well, he's not the one advising. Uh, he, he's basically yeah, trying to... No, I mean, there's no one there who understands, who has had the experience, and I'm going to say I've had it in two different administrations. No, I know. You've overthrown countries and propped no, no, them up. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking I understand. So what, how would you about. advise Trump? How, what would you say? No, no, I, no, no. What I'm asking now, I can't advise it. What I can tell him to do strategically is very simple. He has to get rid of the people he has there. He starts with a group of three and ends up with two two dozen people. When I worked with Baker and Roger Ailes, Ailes knows this better than anyone. You need to know the psychological dynamic of Hillary working in a very constrained period of time over 15, 20 minutes and how she baits him. At the same time, he has to know how vulnerable she is. So what's her vulnerability? The fact of the matter is that her agenda and resume is a complete vulnerability. Sure, I'd bring up all the failed states. I'd bring up ISIS killing Christians by the hundreds well, thousands? not only that, it's, it's even more basic than that. You know, he started to do this when she said I was a senator, then say, in fact, well, you claimed, you, Hillary, claimed you would bring in 200,000 jobs. Over eight years, there were no job increases. As a matter of fact, there was a 25% decrease in jobs. Trump didn't say that. Instead, he got hooked, and she baited him right into uh, talking about ad hominem about... Sure, but in fairness, Dr. Pachanik, what do you make of Lester Holt? 
40 yeah, plus times well, interrupting I, the, I the signals. With, with all due respect, Alex, I had two different candidates who had all kinds of intermediaries. The, the key to any strategy in the debate is to take control of your own dynamic, which he has not. No, I agree. I, listen, I ignore whatever they're saying and just cover the facts and have the energy and show that I'm dominating them. That's correct, but you're a little bit different in the fact that you do have this history of consistency. You know what you're talking about, and you don't have to deal with an interloper. In this case, uh, Trump is really coming off of his own narcissism. He can't do that. There is no one there who can put him in, in check and say, look, this is what you have to do. These are the steps in a psychological warfare when you're dealing with somebody over a five-minute period period of time. It's not the same as you're dealing with them over three years or four years. He doesn't have anyone like that. He's hired all kinds of people who've had no experience whatsoever. Oh, I agree. He's got a bunch. Of, I mean, these so many people he's got working for him. I mean, I, I, I'm yeah, sorry. Boxes. What and, did they yeah. ever build? I, I mean, I, I mean, they do not know what they're doing. No, I mean, James Woolsey comes on to support Trump. I knew James Woolsey. He was a disaster as a CIA director, a complete disaster. The man never even saw Bill Clinton for two and a half years. Then he was a neocon who wanted 9-11. The man is, is, is disaster. He's not good in intelligence. He's totally oriented to war and profiteering. He, he's a second-rate man. The issue here isn't about who he can put on board and who likes him or doesn't like him. The issue is very simple. It's like a building. Do you have a strategy? Do you have a tactic? Implement it systematically. He has no one there who can do it for him. Michael Flynn cannot do it for him. General Kellogg cannot do it for him. The woman who's in charge can't do it for him. He has no one there. It was not an accident that I was called in by Bush Sr.'s people, Baker and others, and Hadley and new administrations, because they knew exactly what it is that one has to do. It's not a fanciful game. It's very simple. It's strategy of psychology. They're not trained in psychology. So I'm warning Trump again. He came to the forefront because people like you and I and the audience supported him. But I can assure him that that audience is getting very disappointed with sure, him. Sure, he has to continue to be a populist. This isn't where you just become a politician. No, and now that but you're that's the... not only that. He has to be... He, Alex, he has to be able to articulate what he's Well, let's come back then and spend five minutes. You're going to be Donald Trump with Hillary. What you say to her. Then I want to get another geopolitical things that are taking place and more with Dr. Steve Pachinik. I'm Alex Jones. Infowars.com is our website. They're trying to censor it. Spread that link to everyone. Download the free app, Infowars.com forward slash app. I use the word too much, but it really is the best word. It is surreal. It's like you've read history. You've seen examples of tyranny, hundreds of millions killed by out of control authoritarian governments, fascists, communists, you name it. The 20th century, and you see tens of millions killed in the last 16 years. And a warm-up, a, a, a preparation, and most analysts agree, for something much more dangerous than the last century. And all these articles now in the Hollywood Reporter, the London Guardian, about elites all running to New Zealand because of what they think is imminent collapse. I don't know what's going to happen. I want to stabilize things. I don't want to have a civil war. And I see George Soros running around trying to start race wars. His own emails come out and the U.N. saying they're going to, you know, have reparations for black people so the U.N. should run things. And... Loretta Lynch says, I'm going to have the U.N. run local police. I mean, this is crazier than I thought they'd try. And I want Dr. Steve Pachinik to have a few minutes here to talk about what, how he would advise Trump, where he sees this election going. What happens if Hillary, let's war game this, does get in by fraud or whatever, and she clearly looks insane half the time. I want to get his expert opinion on what he thinks is wrong with her. There's a lot to cover. But this is an incredible time to be alive. A very, very incredible time to be alive. Before I go any further, free shipping on all products at InfoWarsStore.com ends today. Uh, we have the new probiotic, seven years uh, of uh, development and design. This is the cutting edge of what's going on in Europe. Doesn't have the fillers. Uh, 25 billion live. Well, the, 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 the extra strength version is the first one we actually have out. So it's 50 billion live. And then you also have... All the other great things that are involved in it. The 23 strains. Infowarslife.com. Infowarsstore.com. We're really, really proud of this. But regardless, it funds our operation. You get a Hillary for Prison shirt. You get a Molon Lambe shirt. Come and take it shirt. You get a you know package of non-GMO heirloom. 
open pollinated seeds. It's great to plant with the kids. Uh, it's all there. Infowarsstore.com, Infowarslife.com. And we're building this media operation with your support. And it's about taking action, not just physically or not just with your spoken word or what emails you send or how you vote, but also in the media you support. Infowarsstore.com, Infowarslife.com. And it's not one of our big sellers, but I, I just love non, you know, GMO heirloom seeds and things. I love gardening when I have time to do it. And we have the biggest selection that you're going to find online of the very best non-GMO heirloom seed vaults and systems. And we've got now more than 20 different companies and brands that we've personally tested out and tried that are very affordable, high quality, uh, from fruit trees down to basic vegetable packages to uh, you name it, it's all there. Infowarsstore.com, Infowarslife.com, water filtration, air purifiers, uh, just whatever's the very best, you know, the newest jumper cable system with 10 different ports to jump your car 14 times. It's the third the size of a briefcase. I mean, just whatever's cutting edge of the best, we've got it. Infowarsstore.com, Infowarslife.com, or call toll-free 888-253-3139. I want to thank you all for your support. Now, Dr. Steve Pachinik's Twitter is twitter.com forward slash Steve Pachinik. You really want to follow him there to get the amazing, uh, incisive, uh, uh, you know, reports. I mean, just looking at him two weeks ago saying, ah, it looks like the Jesuits are trying to run this show right now. Nobody's saying that. But you study it, you look at it, and then you see the Pope says stuff, and a week later Obama says it word for word, the same script, and then vice versa. I mean, this is like creepy. This is very, very creepy. Uh, and I don't know any Catholics that like this Pope. I mean, this guy is the anti-Pope at every level. But that's the type of stuff. Tim Kaine, liar. Well, let's put it back on screen. I'll give folks a headline. Tim Kaine, liar. Jesuit CIA operative with dark past. Boy, you said it. And the guy just just is like a flaming candy ass. And it just seems to go with the territory with these type of sellouts and 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 and, and sycophants. Now, humor me, Dr. Pachenik. Before you get into Trump and, and where you see this going and what's happening, I didn't bring up you know the Russians when I'm supposed to do an interview with them bringing you up. Or I didn't bring up the CIA, you know, visiting or whatever, you know, to act impressive on air, obviously. I want folks to know how real this is and that a show like this could actually have them all shook up and not knowing what to do and Hillary attacking me. I think that speaks to weakness, not our strength. And so I was just wanted you to talk to specifically the battlefield right now globally, who some of the factions are and where you see this going. Let's just hypothetically say Trump doesn't get in, which I think he will if he you know, plays his cards right. He's on the wave of a populist movement. But like you said, if he starts waffling, why does it matter? Maybe it's better Hillary gets in and she's collapsing, looks completely mentally ill, though that's dangerous. Uh, maybe that totally discredits these people once and for all. They were so arrogant, they forced another Bush slash Clinton dynasty in. I, I mean, just how do you see the tea leaves, basically, is what I'm getting at. And why is the power structure openly saying now they want to censor everything, which seems to be a, a, to be a really desperate move, showing they know they're in major decline? Well, I think you've said it very clearly, Alex. The, the power structure, not only here but all over the world, is, is unified in one element. They are afraid of this. We're outliers. We're the black swan. You were the black swan on radio and on the, and the Internet. Ironically, I was the black swan in writing about cyber terrorism, cyber nation 20, 30 years ago under the Clancy franchise. So what they're afraid of is that the words we speak, they, they're quite accurate. And f a better, often, more often than not, we tend to be very accurate in our predictions. I don't say my predictions, but our predictions. As you said, a year ago or many years ago, I brought up the issue of the Pope repeatedly. I accused the Pope as a physician of complicity in the murder and torture of Catholics in Argentina who disappeared. Now, that was over a year and a half ago. That's correct, as well as the Jesuits and nuns who were killed by the current. And now he's speaking probably about you. That's not anything. When he says that's conspiracy that's theorist anything. journalists must be shut down. I Catholic, and I went, attended Catholic churches in, in Albi, in, in Toulouse. But the second part is that I accused the Clinton administration and the Obama administration of such massive corruption that James Comey is sitting there like a fool, a moron, and a pathetic idiot who can't answer a simple question that's given to him. Why did you... Uh, 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 or 
for impeachment to criminals, and including Lint, uh, Merrill, uh, the the woman who's uh, what's her name? No, not Loretta Lynch, but the the chief of staff for Hillary, who was also in his law firm. So the corruption of Lynch, the corruption of Brennan, the corruption of our military, all lies within the system of Obama, Clinton, and the Bush. Sure, Cheryl Mills or, or Schultz? Cheryl Mills. Cheryl Mills was in the same law firm as Comey. He should have recused himself. He and she were in the same. And, and, and as a psychological Andy warfare expert, one of the leading ones out there, Patricia, stop for a moment, daughter. That's what I mean. As a top, you know, psychiatrist looking at this, because as a layperson, it's like emperor's new clothes. Don't they get there burning themselves down in front of everyone? Yes, but with all due respect, Alex, what happens when you have massive self-destructive behavior? That's what you're seeing. Comey was put on the spot, thank God, by our congressional uh, operatives and our congressmen who said correctly, why are you offering immunity? Why have you not followed through? And Comey cannot answer the questions. And he can't answer it because he's lying. He knows he came to that position as a result of collusive behavior, compromising his integrity and compromising the integrity of the FBI. John Brennan compromised himself long ago. He was known as a secondary operative. He was really an analyst. In the intelligence community, Brennan was not considered very bright. So who, well, who brought him up? The Bushes and the Clintons because they could manipulate him. Remember, a system of politics depends on vulnerability and pandering, not on competency. You and I have to depend on competency. The American public has to depend on competency. They don't pander. That's right. We've got to make our kids lunches. We got to pick them up. We got to pay the bills. Yeah, we got to. We got to. We got to change the cat box. We got to take the dog for a walk. We got to pay the taxes. We got to show up. They just sit up there. And why do you think? I asked a question earlier. I have all these clips we can play, but I'm sure you've seen them. This new thing where they go on TV and laugh about how dumb we are and admit they're lying to us and celebrate it on Charlie Rose, celebrate it on C-SPAN, celebrate it and say, thank God we're dumb. What is that? Well, all that is, is is fear and a secondary issue. It's it's a distraction from the main issue where they realize they're highly vulnerable. If a so that's them like acting Alex competent. Jones, that's them whistling past the graveyard. Audience. Is that them whistling past the graveyard? Well, it's not only whistling past the graveyard. They're in the process of self-destructing, and they don't know what to do. They don't know how to strike out. In the same way that Trump should have hit Hillary about her father, who was a Jew, didn't like the fact he was a Jew, changing his name to Rodham, was a man who abused her physically and mentally as well as a mother, and never made a penny. Yeah, let's talk about the CIA file on Hillary, uh, her real background. Let's talk about that. Well, I, the CIA file on Hillary is that I wouldn't be surprised, quite frankly. I don't want to say this again. We don't want to get the Justice Department in here, but let's just let's just not play games. Let's just get it up. Well, there's no playing games. The problem. No, I'm not saying you are, but let's. As a psychiatrist, what do you? I mean, we know about her history. We know her dad was a mob boss in Chicago. We know he was Jewish. You're you're half Jewish, and nothing wrong with that. Point is, she's not. She's ashamed of that. I'd be proud of it if I was her. And let's talk about why she's so mentally ill. She's not. She's ill right now because she came to the point in her life where physically and mentally she has self-destructed. She has Parkinsonism. It's an issue of neurological damage. It's been there for years, four to five years. Columbia Physician and Surgeons has the record. They have the neurological evaluation. They have the CAT scans, the MRIs. She picked a little doctor who attended my Cornell Medical College, and she lied, this doctor. But Columbia has all of the records. We don't see MRIs. We don't see the CAT scans. And she's trying to lie her way to the presidency. She may get there because... Because if Trump fails, he'll fail. Because We're going to get to that, I problem. promise, in a moment. But but specifically then, let me just ask this question because I thought it's so interesting. I mean, I mean, that happened. In fact, some of the people were in the office and they saw them. They're like, this is a TV show. Why do you think the Russians, before I was never allowed basically back on RT again unless I was a guest on a, another show or, say, a documentary interviewed me? I don't care about RT. Big deal. The point is, is they want to be on all the time. And then after there was this meeting... And it was an RT, and it was like this Russian government and people interrogating me for like 20 minutes. And I was just like, this is an interview. They kept asking about you, 
And then they basically thought I was some operative or something, which I'm not. I'm proud of the fact I'm organic, folks. I'm proud that I haven't been part of some agency. I'm not saying it's bad if you've been. They were obsessed with you and really were acting like you were Godzilla or something. Well, here's the problem. They, the Russians knew very well that I worked in the Soviet Union to take them apart from the 1960s, thanks to Nixon, where I was sent overseas and started working in the Russian Soviet psychiatric hospitals. I was taking out uh, Christians, Anabaptists, and Baptists out of these psychiatric hospitals and beginning to take down the Soviet Union. Putin knew this. I mean, he was not there at the time, but Andropov knew this, the KGB knew this. They knew all about my work. Why is that I, so important, getting people out of countries? Because I know that was... Because it was the beginning of the end of the Soviet Union. I had developed a plan which systematically was able to work on the fact that there were Christians who were defying the uh, atheist ideology of communism, and in turn, they were put in psychiatric hospitals. So I had the credibility as a psychiatrist to go in there, and I literally commoditized these Christians by saying to one of Stalin's men, who was the last man available, a doctor, I will give you Wang computers, X number of Wang computers, for this person, that person, and that person. They all turned out to be major Christians. In turn, we began to take down the system little by little. Oh, I get it, by spreading the word that the Christians could reactivate inside Russia. Correct. But the second part was the fact that I knew their KGB was highly compromised, and I could buy off many of their operatives, including the GRU, the KGB, and other elements, by helping... It was just weird the because family. they were interrogating me, and I said, this isn't a TV interview, is it? And they're like, no, Pachinik, why does he talk to you? What is Pachinik doing? <laughs> and, and, and so I thought it was very, very interesting that they're definitely obsessed with you. Well, they are obsessed with me. Putin, to this day, wants to know how I took down the Soviet Union, and he's not going to know that. But I do have respect for him in terms of the fact he has to do what he's doing, but he cannot continue in Syria to kill those people. That's a warning to Putin. That's the beginning of the end of Putin. And I'm saying to him very clearly, you have problems within the Kremlin. You have the FSB. You have the SUV. And you know very well that we can put them into spin. And that means that Putin understands that he can't trust anyone. And that's exactly what we did or I did years ago with several of Brezhnev and Yeltsin and others who were involved in the Soviet Union. It is not hard to take down the... Sure, and conversely, though, the White House is, is, is scared of you and other patriots. So we're yeah, going to break, come back. We're going to go to break I and have you... Follow. Listen, I was trained by our military and by my intelligence service. My dedication is to this country. I do not ask for promotions. They asked me to be promoted to a rear admiral at 39. I turned it down. They asked me to get a pension. I turned it down. I did not have money. I wasn't being cavalier. I simply wanted to serve the country, to thank this country for taking me in as a refugee and allowing me to be everything I could be and fail. And that was the beauty of what I did. So they had no hold on me. No, no, we're going to break. I'm going to come back and get your message, what you think Trump should do in the next debate. Right. Uh, but specifically, though, the only reason we bring this up is, is, is the battlefield spectrum. I know the police are somewhat awake. The military is awake. A lot of people, I never want to make the government like the good guys, but it seems like government people are more awake than the general public. Uh, the arrogance of trying to put Hillary in, the rotting political system. How would you describe the political climate right now? It's totally corrupt. It is so self-destructive and it's irrelevant. What's happening right now is as I went through the, the, the nation, the different states, it was clear to me, as I've said for a long time, Washington is irrelevant. They know it. They're irrelevant. So they're trying to create false flags, which we had in Sandy Hook and all that other nonsense, in order to make themselves relevant. The FBI has become irrelevant. The CIA has become irrelevant. In fact, what's becoming more and more relevant are people who are staying home, doing cyber security, and doing internet work. What's happening in our country is we're transforming from an industrial state to an information age, and we're trying to compete with a massive Chinese economic engine, not military. And because the global has shut down our economy to sell it off, they've actually forced us to morph and create new economies the central system can't control. Well, there is no more central system. With all due respect, the globalists are finished. The beginning, and that's why I support... That's what I wanted to say. They expected this whole world government. It's already falling apart. It's every fallen. E it's every fallen. EU country's Alex. leaving. It's fallen. And one of the things you and I were successful in doing is when we supported the movements 
for Catalan to break away from Spain, for England to break away from EU, and for Scotland to break away from England was the beginning of the end of EU. And by the way, I'm not bragging, but I've talked to Farage at dinner and on air. He admitted that UKIP was nothing until 15 years ago, and that most of their new members were from this show, people listening over there. I don't want to give us credit, but it's actually crazy that he will tell you that UKIP got its main push from InfoWars. That's which correct. I, I wasn't kidding you. It came out of you, out of here. We, you and I kept discussing it, and you would ask me what was happening, and I kept saying I remember you said five years ago, watch, nationalist movements breaking away, the EU's done. That's and I correct. actually didn't. I thought you were being too confident. That's no, what's crazy, I, I, Doc. This is really happening. We'll be right back. And you're part of it. I know. I it's mean, amazing. Stay there. There's all these sociopaths, or people that really aren't even sociopathic, but they act like it. A lot of them they care at some level. They think screwing everyone over and only caring about what you're getting today is what a winner does. No, that's not what builds civilization. And uh, I can tell you unequivocally that they're coming to the end of their road. we got six minutes with Dr. Pachinik, then five more, and then I'm going to have uh, Anthony Cumia, who's an amazing talk show host, obviously, t uh, taken over. He got kicked off for speaking out against Black Lives Matter and the rest of it of his top XM show. But I, specifically, you know, what Trump should do. Um, Trump, I mean, I don't know what's going on with Trump. I mean, I think he was trying to be nice to a lady, trying to be chivalrous. Uh, but the truth, the truth, heavens may fall. You know, justice be done, may the heavens fall. And so what would you specifically do if you're Donald Trump and you're in the next debate with Hillary Clinton? It's very simple. Number one, he stated it in the beginning that in 30 years she has done nothing. And he has to go into detail to explain that she did nothing when she collated the uh, and called together a bunch of people to create a health program. That was a disaster. The children's program was a disaster. He has to go into detail how she did go into Iraq. But more importantly, he has to go into detail how she attempted to say that she brought in jobs for people in New York State. And as a senator, she accomplished less than nothing, made huge promises, as he said, and go into detail to show that, in fact, that the end of her tenure was a minus 20. And you turned Libya over to al-Qaeda and ISIS? Absolutely. Well, so then, then she can go into ISIS. He said it correctly that al-Qaeda and, and ISIS was the result of her a presence in in the Middle East. The fact that she has a problem in stamina has to do with the fact that she has a medical history. She's fainted repeatedly, and she her response that she can have traveled to 128 countries is not really an issue because that she she ended up with no agreement, with no treaties, and absolutely there was no result to it. And because she didn't and, care, she was just being paid by foreign powers to sell us out. Well, that's part of it, but I don't want him to get into the, you know, to get into a, a tit for tat fight. At the same time, he can explain. That he can just he say, "You're the past. I'm the future. You represent that's everything correct, everyone hates." Alex. That's exactly the point. You are the past. I am the future. You couldn't have said it better. And the, in the future, and what he can do, and really stump her. Put up a PL sheet and a balance sheet in front of her, irrespective of who the intermediary is or the moderator, and say to her, please read the profit and loss statement and tell me what it means. Because not one of our presidents in the past 30 to 40 years has ever had a job. Neither Clinton, Bill Clinton, Bush Jr., Obama. That's his strongest suit. had a job. They act like it's a weakness that he's an outsider. That's what we need. Well, but the contrary, he has to show how important it has been to be able to read a balance sheet, a PL statement, and not defend himself the fact that he had $635 million in debt against a an asset that's worth $10 billion. He's correct, but the people don't understand that. Nor does he get to have to be caught into the tax issue. What he Exactly. Has Most of my company is in the black, but there are areas that are in debt because that's part of the plan to pay it off. I well, mean, that's what you do. But the general public doesn't understand that. No, but you can't teach the general public everything. What you can show is that Hillary has no idea of business, and he has to go into that systematically. Yeah, she just goes and raises taxes and gets more money. I'm sorry? 
She just goes and just takes people's money. Well, she has no idea. She has no real strategy. In fact, her whole team is really nothing more than sycophants whom I've known for 20, 30 years. Second, second tier quality. They're not really very good. They're Al Gore spinoffs or they're Carter. All right, stay there. Five more minutes, sir. Stephen com. Right, so the issue here is then in far. We got to go to break. We got to go to break. Back in 70 seconds. So five more minutes on the other side. I want to ask you to put a bow on this, but but what, what will Hillary do if she gets in? 39 days out, folks. Fourth hour coming up in five more minutes, and then Anthony Cumia is coming on. Welcome back. I'm Alex Jones. Last time he was on, he quoted uh, a quote, uh, and I wanted to look it up, and it was Otto von Bismarck that basically unified Germany, and he said, God has a special providence. That means good luck or you know, uh, uh, a upper hand. God has a special providence for fools, drunkards, and the United States of America. And uh, that's been pointed out for a couple hundred years. We've had un unbelievable good luck. Just really magic things happen. I think we're losing that luck now because this isn't America. We've been overrun by criminals, and we have to show we have courage. So that's why I think God really loves people that have courage and who want people to be individuals and have free will. And, and Dr. Pachinik, in, in, in closing, thanks for all you do. Really appreciate it. I wasn't trying to toot our horn last hour. I just want listeners to understand that it's not that we're that strong. They're there that weak. We just have to understand that we have to move forward and have confidence really change this but um, finishing up what are you looking for in the next 39 days uh let's just hypothetically if hillary gets in what what do you see happening there i mean i think their incompetence is is really the most frightening thing i could imagine you're correct it's it's a combination between her illness the incompetency and the fact that they have to buttress her up so you will see a lot of movement in the beginning and a lot of payoffs in terms of what will happen but she will not make it through the first year. She will probably die within that first year or so. She's not physically fit to handle it, nor mentally. So what we have is a real problem for our intelligence and military community to really take an assessment of what's gonna be happen if she comes in. That will be a very serious problem. It may be a John F. Kennedy type of problem. It may be a Nixonian type of problem. But I've been through this with Nixon and his transition to illness, and we've had a soft coup but they, they're not going to have a, uh, a strong figures who are able to transition this country into a smooth uh, relationship. Won't they just have a big power struggle and hope she's an invalid so her, her adjuncts well, can... it's not only an invalid. It'll be kind of a Woodrow Wilson situation where you, you won't see her, and that's exactly what you're seeing now. She's totally absent from the field. She can't handle most of the issues. And that further discredits the government as the media lies and says she's fine, she's climbing Mount Everest. Correct. And so that, that will be a disconnect, but it'll depend on our military and our intelligence services to determine what it is that they want to do. On one side, you have Michael Flynn on the Trump side. On the other side, you have Michael Hayden. Both are quite qualified. They come out of the military intelligence. I, I know both of these guys, not well, but enough to know that they're competent. The secondary issue is America has to understand we continue no matter who's in, on the top. And no one will, can defeat us. And really what we have to do is to continue to devolve that power to the local level, to the state level. And Where the real engine of prosperity is. Well, the real engine of prosperity, quite frankly, is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in the past two and a half weeks traveling 4,000 miles is the intermodal tra traffic systems that I've seen trucking between the trains, the ships, and our trucks. We're a formidable country. and you Sure, even though the trains weren't upgraded, Eisenhower's plan with the roads really sets us apart. That's correct. The, the genius of Eisenhower has still not been appreciated. A man stopped the war in Korea. He built our roads and warned us of the military-industrial complex. That's what we need right now. We need another Eisenhower. Can Trump? And he that? built the roads not just for the economy, but nobody could ever invade and win after those roads were built. Well, nobody did invade us. The only people who invaded us was Bush and Clinton and the, and the, and the internal... That's it. And, and, and that's why they claim that I'm a Russian agent or whatever, no, because I don't want World War III. They can claim whatever they want, but calling us... Well, what do you make of that? I mean, in 30 seconds, what do you make of this ridiculous thing that Trump's a Russian agent? That's absurd. He's no more a Russian agent than Hillary's a Russian agent. Both do businesses with Russia. Podesta, who's the right-hand man to Hillary, and is totally corrupt. Uranium. The Podesta group does business with Russia, the Ukraine, and so does Manafort, and so does Trump. So that's that's equal. That's not the issue anymore. All right, Dr. Pachinik, always informative. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure, and God bless your audience. God bless you. Steve I'm going to punch out. Anthony Cumia. 
coming up, host in the fourth hour, straight ahead, big syndicated talk show host in his own right, always informative. Looking forward to watching this in my office as I take care of business. Here he is, straight ahead in three minutes.